Okay. Okay, this is in the Temple of Osiris at Abydos, and we're going to now talk about the world famous glyphs that have been found here that some people think are helicopters, submarines, etc. Up on the upper wall, up there. Now, I actually knew the person who started the craze. Her name was Dr. Ruth Hover, bless her memory. Uh, 1998, 1988, she took a picture of that, and it went viral. And everybody's picked it up, including the ancient aliens crowd, saying it's proof of aliens, this and that, and this and that. But there's a scientific archaeological way to explain that. If carefully looked at, one will see that there is an overlaying glyph on top. Oh, glyphs were laid over what was originally there. It is in archaeology called a palimpsest. Uh, actually, archaeology has borrowed the term. Uh, it's P-A-L-I-M-P-S-E-T, if you want to Google it. And it has to do with being overlaid with something underneath. The key how Hakim explained it, whether one wants to believe they're helicopters or not, he, if, as we've spoken, everything in Kemet was a duality. What was on one side was on the other side. So Hakim said what would be on the east wall would be on the west wall. What's on the north wall would be on the south wall. If we go here and we look what's up there, we see it's the normal cartouches of Hamsi. No helicopters, no airplanes, no nothing. It would have to be there if it was original. And it is not. So this is an overlaying glyph. Yusuf actually showed us many other examples in some of the other temples of glyphs of Ramsey's second priesthood, laying glyphs over what was before. That is what is there. It has peeled off, so it looks like helicopters, it looks like spaceships, but it is not. Well, I don't, I don't know. To me, they do look like a helicopter, a tank, and a plane, but would an ancient uh, civilization necessarily copy the sort of things that we invent just because we have helicopters? Could an older and even more technologically sophisticated culture bother with such transitional uh, machinery like that? Now, Yusuf Awian is going to show us some other glyphs which uh, are complex, and the story behind the so-called helicopter, etc., is that they were glyph on top of glyph. It was multi. It was carved in multiple stages by different cultures, and that's why it's a confusing mess to us. Okay. Here's Yusuf, and he's going to explain glyph upon glyph examples. So clear, we're not far from the wall that has the depictions that says helicopter on top, and we see here high relief writing was by Seti the first, and layer of deep relief carving by Ramses, right on top of it. It comes right over it. Okay. From all sides. This character here, you can see the writing came on top of it as well. So that's, that's simply what happens. We're laying writing above writing, and then it gives us these figures that we imagine Based on our culture, of course, we see a helicopter and a submarine. And plus, we don't see anything like that depicted in any other temple. Right. Can you explain why, why was Ramses so emphatic about such deep relief carvings like this compared to in his my predecessors? Opinion, in my opinion, he was uh, like uh, being careful that nobody will come and do the same thing for him. Uh -huh. To erase his writings and add others. That's why he would add it deep. And we can see clear examples of this in Karnak Temple. He put his cartouches and his writings way deep in the stone where nobody can come and scratch it and add uh, his own writings. And this just shows that that was his style. If there is writings, he can remove it and add his. Here they didn't even bother removing the older description. They just laid the other ones right on top of it. 